Hashtag the Trans Awareness Day went up on Twitter.com over the weekend. Oh, I bet that was, but that went up like, down like a lead balloon. <laughs> of course it did. We'll start off with some of the uh, hoes who are mad, specifically commie hoes who are mad. So you can start off here with uh, a hammer and sickle account, of course. Nice trans flag and ha yeah, hammer and sickle in the bio. Yeah. So this was trending. This sucks. Where's this energy for Trans Awareness Week? You can't give an F about the transistors unless you also care about trans people. If you only care about the transitioners and their stories, y'all don't care about trans people or detransitioners. So how dare you point this out? In effect, is what they're saying there. We cover trans stuff quite a lot. I, don't, I just don't care so. about the opinions of a commie. So. Commie opinions are also you, trash. You don't care about this? Uh, shut up, commie. There was also attempts to try and shut this down, lads, from other hoes. I'm amazed that Twitter allowed this to trend, to be honest. I am too. So this is the typical thing <laughs> that I saw. Uh, I didn't see any major accounts doing this, but it was lots and lots of little accounts, let's say. So as you see here, someone else saying, uh, remember, out of all the detransitioners, only 5% realized it wasn't for them. There are still 95% who detransition mostly because of transphobia. How do you know? And they have a, a big old list there. This is data from 2015. From can we, some report. Yeah, can we have a look at this? And as they say, realize there was not for yeah. them, 5%, and then other reasons. I assume the financial reasons are also transphobia. Um, <laughs> right, so they okay. have uh, pressure yeah. there, they say, yeah. about the whole thing. Yeah. I don't know what pressure means, of course, because it could be <sighs> someone saying, are you sure? Yeah. Is that pressure? Maybe. Might be. I mean, it's transphobia, so. <laughs> not, not accepting it on face value. Yeah. If you go to the next one, you can see the report itself. The data in here is from 2015. As you can see, 2015 US Transgender Survey, so probably for me before, probably 2014 or something. And in here they say 8% of respondents reported having detransitioned at some point. Hmm. So that was the data then. And the reason I asked you before we did this when we were doing the research, when can you think actually this all kind of took off? Not the debate about what is a woman, but that we openly saw in schools different groups and ideological actors purposely trying to transition kids it's certainly come to the forefront in the sort of public debate in the last couple of years mm. like if you go back five or six years this wasn't something people talked about and there's no real I'm data not saying on, it didn't happen I, I couldn't find any data that close to sort yeah. of this time period so right. that's what i'm also keeping in mind going forward on this but we'll go to the story so we start off with a story here someone saying uh hi i'm elaine i'm 24 I started transitioning when I was 18 to better fit in with the weirdo gamer anime fans I found myself hanging out with. I detransitioned a year ago, and now I'm happier than ever. Man, the animated trans pipeline is real. Yes. It's it absolutely is. real. I, I, the gamer one, I'm not so sure about, but the anime one yeah. definitely seems to be the case. And of course, someone who has got out of that. So again, it was pressure Different. from, what would you call that? A peer group. Yeah. The peer group pressured her. Yeah through saying, oh, maybe you're trans. Wasn't. By the evidence that they then had to detransition. Mm -hmm. But that happened to them. Great. We move forward to the next one. There's someone else saying, I let the internet convince me that gender dysphoria equals trans. It turns out gender dysphoria can also be a symptom of not fitting into society's ideals for femininity and compounded by hating yourself. I am gender non-conforming, not trans. Is this person's response to detransitioning. This person seems to be perfectly feminine. Yeah, don't know what the hell they're talking about, being non-conforming. No. I, I, what society's idea of femininity? Well, you seem to be upholding them. Yeah, that's what I would have thought, but okay. That's, There's no uh, way I would have said you're not a woman. That's their response there. Go to the next one. We have someone who says, uh, my name is Grace and I detransitioned. On the left, me shortly after top surgery, 2017. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> that's, the, that's the bit that really bothers me. Where it's like, okay, look, you can, you can say, you know, you can dress in a certain way, you can act in a certain way, you can say you know, these are my pronouns, but when you start having surgery and permanently removing parts of your body, if you're not sure, don't do it. 100%. It's awful. This was the darkest time in my life. On the right, me recently, life goes on, life gets better. Mm. So they again had to detransition because, well, they were led to a place that was false yeah. and then had to try and fix it. But life gets better. Again, I bet groomed by the internet. Yeah, but also the fact that, you know, when you transitioned, it was a horrible time for them. Um, yeah, something to keep in mind. Yeah. Go to the next one. There's a big long story here from someone who says, uh, I began detransitioning in October 2019 by ceasing my testosterone injections and returning to my birth name, Sinead. 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 Right. The most common question I get from those new to d the discussion is, quote, why did you transition in the first place? Like other trans people, I transitioned because I was suffering from gender dysphoria. We're told people with this dysphoria are treated with transition, right? But unlike other trans people, transition didn't help. This is one of the changes 
that especially happens, as I know Josh said, in American psychology, but mm -hmm. in, in Britain, psychology still deems that this is a thing to be treated, mm -hmm. not a lifestyle choice. Yeah. So this is the debate of uh, someone has the dysphoria, what do you do? Okay, well, the Americans have got to the point, well, especially the progressives in the UK as well, have decided, well, just start cutting, just start the surgeries. I just don't understand why they're not encouraged to try and identify with their sex rather than trying to transition them into the well, opposite. That would be conversion therapy. You'd be trying to stop them to but do what they surely want. Surely conversion is from female to male know, rather right? than female to more female. Makes no sense. <laughs> you know? But trying to talk to someone is conversion therapy. Like, oh, we're going to give you hormones. What, estrogen? No, testosterone. Why? They're giving someone drugs, especially children drugs. Yeah, but if, <laughs> if, if giving... Irreversible If drugs. giving a woman testosterone makes her more manly, then surely giving a woman estrogen makes her more womanly. Therefore, would help. Yeah, therefore, no surgery needed. Therefore, she can actually be like, oh, yeah, no, I am a woman. I just, you know, had low ostrich in need a I top up. <laughs> like, yeah, I just, I don't know. Like, it just seems that there's, that you, that's, there's no discussion in that area of thought, you know? No. I, mean, I don't know anything about it. The second most common question is, why did you detransition? I detransitioned because I was experienced extreme transition regret, realizing that my desire to become a man stemmed from a variety of factors that ultimately led me to want to become someone else. Not my authentic self, but someone and something else to entirely to me. So, didn't want to become yeah. a man, but just not me. Don't want to be Schneed. My transition was fueled by self-hatred, not self-acceptance. I didn't want to be Sinead because I hated Sinead. Sinead was a woman, and I wanted to no, be no part in that anymore. I became Sean, a man, and I'd felt better, or so I hoped. I never thought I'd ever accept myself, but I do, and I've never been happier to anyone struggling with transition regret. You are absolutely not alone. Recovery is possible. My DMs are always open to anyone who needs a rock to lean on, as my rocks once did for me. So again, I mean, there's a little community being formed here as well, yeah, yeah. which is interesting to see because this hasn't really been a thing. Well, and it's, it's heresy. Well, there's also more and more people experiencing the same yeah. consequences. But it's it's heresy to the orthodox social justice narrative. Absolutely. Now, if we go to the next one, we see. I J bet these people get an awful lot of harassment online by leftists. J.K. Rowling took note. Another heretic, oh. because uh, someone said that this was you just being stupid, and she was just like, "You're a moron." No, like. There are people being misled. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, what well, J.K. Rowling tweeted out about detransition. Mm. Uh, yeah. So, right. of course, that made it even bigger. Mm. And then we get to the other ones. The other ones that I've noticed all have a little more thinking into it. So why no, did No, it no, says Ukraine flag. Yeah. God. They, let's not have that conversation right now. <sighs> Just, uh, like, absolute NPCs mm. to a hegemonic narrative. If we go to the next one, we can see some more in these where the diagnosis gets a bit more clear. Mm. Hi, I'm Ali, and I started taking testosterone at 18 because I was tired of not fitting in with other girls. So I thought I'd make a ma better man instead. An autism diagnosis later, and it all makes sense now. They had autism. Well, yeah, I can tell. But like... And they were corralled by their peers. Yeah. Not entirely sure who in this case. But if we go to the next link, we can see some people. Attractive young lady. Who cares if you don't fit in with other girls? Women hate each other. Don't worry about that. <laughs> <laughs> women are oh, women. Oh, look, an attractive woman. Yeah, you're not going to get many friends from other women. <laughs> if we go to the uh, next one, we can see some of this. So, I mean, this is a report that we've mentioned previously. A school has 17 children changing gender, as Tweetcher says vulnerable pupils are being tricked into believing that they are the wrong sex. I can totally believe it. Yeah. Most of the youngsters undergoing the transformation are autistic, according to a teacher there who said vulnerable children with mental health problems were being tricked. Earlier this year, the Mail on Sunday revealed that a third of all youngsters referred to the NHS over gender identity were children who showed, quote, moderate to severe autistic traits. So it's a lot of autistic kids who don't yeah. fit in because they're autistic. Or they're being groomed by activists for social justice who instead has given that diagnosis. Yes. Because they want to further a political cause, not help the children. Yes. In the slightest. If we go to the next one, we can see some other examples. I don't know if that's her specific case, but it's just something we've also seen, where people say, oh, you must be trans, you're autistic. Mm -hmm. But this is someone else here saying, when I was 15, lonely, and hated my body, I got sucked into gender ideology online. And I imagine that's so easy for teenage girls as well. Because, mm -hmm. I mean, teenage boys, like, I remember being a teenage boy, you know, do you, do you think that much about your body? Do you, th do you remember the images of the schools? Like, lips of TikTok, when she tweets images of the schools, yeah, and yeah, in the school yeah. they have 15 different flags, yeah. all representing different things, gender ideology. Sure, but I can, I can see why w young women are more vulnerable to this. Because, 
like you know it's a sad fact of life i guess that you know men are visual and women therefore have to be concerned about the way they look whereas men we don't have that problem so much you've got no, to be, okay. yeah, exactly we've got to be competent and and successful and various other things but the but the point is you can see how this is drawing in young women because if they're you know is, is a teenage girl i imagine they've got many more body issues than teenage boys self-hatred have. yeah exactly and especially and especially with the instagram generation now where it's looking at these unbelievable pictures and they're like, i can't live up to that it's like no you can't and i know exactly how you feel because i paint my warhammer miniatures and i look at <laughs> no honestly i follow a bunch of warhammer miniature painting i'm like i can't do that and so i know exactly how you feel ladies <laughs> right but i can totally see how this would uh this would be something that affects young women more Definitely, and I'm not discounting any of that. Yeah. But what I'm thinking as well is she's saying she was sucked in by gender ideology. Mm -hmm. And this has always been like, oh, Tumblr, online yeah. weirdos, that sort of exists, and people stumble into it by accident. Yeah. But now when it's in the school system, I mean, especially with the American schools, as mm -hmm. we have shown many a time, where the teachers are actively and openly engaging in gender ideological indoctrination mm -hmm. of their kids, not their kids, sorry, the kids they're meant to be looking after, yep. they're meant to have due gusty over. I mean, it really is horrific yes. when you can see a direct example of well, gender ideology sucking someone into this. She says, my school encouraged me and I was easily prescribed a high <laughs> dose of testosterone at 18. And it was very damaging. This Again, is just perfectly attractive young women as well. It's not like if, if they were, if they were like young women who like were not feminine in any way, right? You can understand how this would be very easy for them to think, well, actually maybe I'm a man, blah, blah, but they're perfectly feminine women. Hmm. She also says this is not rare as well. I believe so it. It's perfectly common. And if we go to the next one, she wrote a big old post about this. And in here she says, the truth is that there has been an extreme rise in adolescents, especially girls, believing they are transgender. Yeah. UK NHS referral data shows a 4,000% increase in pediatric gender service referrals, not a typo. So-called gender dysphoria, which was once a very rare diagnosis that described mostly prepubescent boys and adult men, is now most commonly diagnosed in teenage girls because of the change in technology, perhaps, hmm. as you say. Official figures show the number of children referred for gender treatment, including hormone injections, has risen from 97 in 2010 to 2,519 in 2018. Totally natural. Nothing to do with an activist movement that's online and predating on children who are using social media. Or in your school, actively trying to transition your kids for social justice. Yeah. As you say. From... From 97 to 2,519. It's mad. Within 10 years. Like eight years, even. But by far the steepest rise has come amongst girls, up from 40 to 1,806. Girls are rarely diagnosed with autism as well, aren't they? That's something that people tend to assume only boys have. Because I imagine female autism diagnoses have a different like, set of characteristics or something. It's probably just easier to see when boys are being autistic. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Certainly fun. If we go to the next one, we can also see uh, a report on this back in the day, especially in schools. We're probably all a bit autistic, frankly. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you think I work here? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Trans groups under fire for huge rise in referrals of childs, of children. Activists and vloggers are in the spotlight as one school says 40 pupils do not identify as their birth gender. 40 in one school. Again, Brighton. It's just so unbelievable. For, this is natural. For foreigners who don't know, Brighton is our Portland yes. in the sense that it's the most progressive place yeah, it's, it's, it's the, the only place with a green party mp literally mad people yeah. run this place a further 36 are gender fluid of course they are why not of course so we've now got what was that 76 kids in one school and i imagine hundreds call themselves bisexual yeah. yeah or not identifying with their birth gender quote all the time <coughs> so just sometimes on a thursday yeah that's that's a gender that's not someone in which you should not be encouraging that's terrible no if you go to the next one there are more stories from the detransition awareness day so this person says wouldn't exist if trans healthcare was evidence-based and safe <laughs> yeah. oh that's kira bell that's the we've yeah. covered kira before yeah who had to go through all this and then the high court to try and get this uh, out but I, I can't imagine getting this to be evidence-based and safe at any point no if transgenderism slash gender identity wasn't a social contagion and if fear around gender non-conformity wasn't so ingrained in society which yeah i mean good luck i mean we really are down the rabbit hole in this case yeah because the next one, there's, there's more from her, I believe, which says, I want people to know that detransition rarely means reversal to us. The hormones, definitely surgery, are irreversible, and it will vary in severity depending on how far one has gone. There is no going back, 
Some continue with regret, some find a new path. And it's such a, an awful thing to do to people so young. Children. Defenseless I, children. I can't imagine. You turn that. up with your progressive ideology yeah. and encourage them to destroy their bodies. 17 years old. I mean, I knew nothing. I had no plans for the future. I, I, some perverted witch who has been online and radicalized themselves mm. into extremism turns up and starts trying to snatch up defenseless children for their ideology. Yeah. It really is sick, isn't it? Yeah. Let's go to the next one. So we have Kenzie, who says uh, she transitioned in 2017. My mum put some deeply homophobic and misogynistic ideas of what a woman should be into my head. I transitioned to escape my fate of what I thought I had to be as a woman. So radicalised by her feminist mother. Mm. If you go to the next one, you might wonder about the homophobic aspect as well, which is uh, a long-standing thing. As you can see this article here. Well, hang on, no, sorry. Get back. Not even maybe maybe a traditional mother and she being a feminist was like, well, that's homophobic and misogynistic. Therefore, I have to stop being a woman. She doesn't provide many details. But the point is, it, there's ideology in play here. This is not yes. about like you know people. It's not being, about health. No, or normality. Well, anyway, carry on. Sorry. Another example. If we go to the next one, we can see uh, someone saying it feels like conversion therapy for gay kids. Yep. Say clinicians. Ex-NHS staff fear that homophobia is driving a surge in transgender young people. You may also remember this is very much Iran's position on transitioning. Yes. For people who don't know, if you are caught you're having... You're not gay, you're a woman. If a, if a, even if you're a rape victim in Iran, let's say you're a, you're a man and you are raped, or you're a boy, because of course it's Iran, and you end up in front of a court, and the court says to you, well, you've been homosexual, that carries the death penalty, because it's an Islamic country. Yeah. You have an opt-out in Iran. What if you were a woman the whole time? So the option is death or transition? <laughs> Just... <laughs> okay, yeah. And in the West, yep. we have apparently deeply homophobic parents who have decided, my, my son or daughter, they're not gay. Come on, that would be disgusting. They're just a woman. They're just a man. Do we? Apparently that is the claim from the clinicians inside Tavistock. Right. Okay. They had homophobic parents coming to them saying that my son isn't gay. He's just, he's just a woman. He's just, he's just transgender. I'd rather my son be gay than become a woman. I know. We, weird, weird parents. Yeah, being there, gay apparently. isn't going to kill him. If we go to the next one as well, the next uh, link you have in here, of course, a report that just came out that adds as well. The Tavistock Clinic faces a complete overhaul after a review found that its gender identity services are, quote, not a safe or viable long-term option for children. Right. You are evil. I mean, the most evil people in society. Taxpayer funded. Yeah. The heroes in the NHS. Under the Conservative government. I want to burn NHS flags at this point. If you go to the next one, we can see- It's probably illegal. Andy No also had something to say on this, which is uh, because he is, of course, a, a gay man as well. Mm -hmm. He is a concerned, especially with the homophobic aspect of yeah. all this, which is uh, where all the gays going. They're all really well, I've, trans. I've, I've spoken to a bunch of people who were saying that they, they were told because they were effeminate men, oh, you must be trans. And they were like, no, I'm just gay. It's, it's fine, you know. Exactly what Andy says. Yeah. As a child, my interests included dolls and dresses. I was raised at a time when the culture and adults didn't introduce ideas that those interests indicated gender. I'm thankful I was free to grow into a man with varied hobbies and who happens to be gay. Mm. Solidarity with detransition awareness day. Absolutely. Then one of this off with a, another transitioner who I just wanted to mention as well. So this person here saying thank you for all the support for boosting your signal on detransition awareness day. Mm -hmm. Again, a heretical yeah, uh, it is. statement and a heretical space as well. Of course, twitter.com being a leftist zone. Oh, absolutely. You know, you, you get banned for misgendering people on Twitter. As you can see with these people, especially this one here, they're also sick of the alphabet people because they don't count themselves in it. They might be gay, they might be uh, transitioning, sure, sure. they might not be, whatever. But they're not yeah. part of the progressive cult. Are they politically that thing? Exactly. That's the question. Because we go to the next one, we have uh, some idiot just being like, oh, the with LGB alliance saying here about the uh, don't say gay yeah. bill and people calling it don't say gay. And it's just like, it's not that at all. Yeah. I imagine LGB Alliance were actually pointing that out. And yeah. then him being like, it's insane that our journalists have become so corrupt that they can't even report facts anymore. They don't say gay is being misrepresented by the left. Yeah, th this, is, this is why it was a mistake not to have named the bill something quite aggressive. Yeah, Stop the, perverting children. Get the witches out of the schools. Yeah. I don't know what to say, because that's exactly what they want. Anti-groomer bill. That would have been a great, great idea. It would. Yeah, because that's what's happened. And with a lot of these, as a couple of them mentioned, they were in school, some groomer mm. turned up, and has done this to them, and then they've had to get themselves out of it yep. after being, well, defenseless children who were taken advantage of by knowing adults. And by not just knowing adults either, adults in a position of authority as well. 
you know, they're teachers or like, you know, specialists or whatever. But the point is they're they're operating under the authority of the school that the children are you know naturally inclined to obey because that's the point of the school and so the, yeah like again like they should have named it something but just something actually. well the anti-groomer bill we're just gonna yeah. start naming it yeah yeah, right? yeah the so, anti-groomer bill yeah. the anti-groomer bill is going after exactly this situation and why this story popped up which is the detransitioning mm. we've always warned i mean you've always warned especially you know in 20 years we're gonna have a million stories about detransitioning oh it's gonna be horrific we're already getting there yeah we're already getting people piling up saying yeah i was in school and i was lied to this is the thin edge of the wedge though and now we have the anti-groomer bill, which should be hoping to do its job in Florida, but nowhere else. The rest of us are still living in this hell. Mm. And, well, something should be done about it immediately, which is probably copy and paste the anti-groomer bill yeah. to every legislative body in the world. If you appreciated that segment from the podcast of the Lotus Eaters, you can go to lotuseaters.com to get access to all the premium content we have on the site, such as the history series that Bo and Carl do together, this one on the French Revolution, starting off a part zero with the life of Napoleon. And if you want to follow Carl, you can follow him on Getter at at Carl Benjamin. Thank you and goodbye.